From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. We will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods. We'll stop all gatherings of more than two people in public. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. And we'll stop all social events, including weddings. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard. And yet it is also true that there is a clear way through, that as they have in the past so many times, the people of this country will rise to that challenge and we will come through it stronger than ever. We were all in the same boat at the start of lockdown. No one really knew what was going to go on. There was a lot of, of bewilderment, a lot of fear, really, about what the future might hold. You know, you're scared for everyone around you. You just think, what on earth is going to happen? What was going through my head was, oh my goodness, what, what is happening to the world? I generally thought it would pass when I got the phone call to say that we were shutting the doors. It was hard. We had our diary fall in visions of how it was going to be before COVID-19 changed it all. We couldn't really do anything for about seven or eight weeks. Uh, we were really worried. Everything has had to change. I basically shut everything down. I, I closed the doors. The world stopped and nobody knew what, what the future was going to look like. There was just a different feeling in the air. There was this weird, sombre feeling. We'd had a really solid start to the year and then March came and it was just flat. We've had to adapt uh, enormously. This is a project that has had lots of ups and downs throughout the whole journey. It's been postponed, it's been shelved, unexpected things have got in the way. It hasn't gone how I wanted it to. In some respects it's gone better than I hoped. And all of this really is exactly how this whole year has gone. I think when things like this happen on a a nationwide or a, a, a global scale, it's really important to capture what's going on so that we can look back and reflect on it and learn from it. And I'm delighted to say that a few months down the line, we've managed to speak to people who have really stepped up to the plate and adapted to this massive challenge that has presented itself this year. People who've done amazing things to not only keep themselves in business and, and keep afloat, but also to help other people. We've made changes to the business model as a team that I probably wouldn't have, have done otherwise. It's made me more appreciative of my business as well. There's been a huge focus on the support local narrative, which is great. I think some of these things that we've learnt and, and created during lockdown are going to continue. Within three weeks almost, people had transitioned. They were up and running. They were finding a new way of working. After all this is over, I definitely think we're going to get a lot of football. I appreciated the importance of teamwork before, and not just teamwork, but having a good team around you. I appreciate that more now. It's been a massive boot up the backside for me to do things that I've wanted to do in my business for a long time. Honestly, I love how we've responded to lockdown. It was a real opportunity, actually, for me to be able to pause and reflect on the business. Week on week, things are changing now. The pace of change is now moving towards what I see is progress. There is opportunities for people out there. You've got to be nimble, you've got to be alive to them. You know, there is no blueprint, there is no template to work from, so let's go find a solution that fits. In late March, early April, there wasn't much optimism going around. And it still remains quite bleak to this day, but throughout all of this terrible stuff that was happening, I knew that there were good stories out there. I knew that people were doing really good things, and I just wanted to capture them. So that's what we decided to go and do. I'm Alex. And I'm Naomi. And this is Wreck the Lockdown. Twenty twenty was shaping up to be our best year yet. 
We usually have a team of up to seven people at any one time. And so, yeah, it's a small premises, but there's a real hustle and bustle about it. Yeah, things have gone really well for five years. We were steadily growing and we've just hit a point in the business where the growth had sped up and was really quite exciting. And so we could see that it was time to start to, to look to the next phase of the business, really. And then, and then COVID-19 hit and everything kind of changed quite quickly. Typical day, typical week is just full of busyness, laughter, fun, games. Well, the odd tears, don't get us wrong. Sometimes that's not always the little ones. Sometimes that's the staff as well. Things at the beginning of the year, for us as a business, things were looking really quite good. We had our diary fall in visions of how it was going to be before COVID-19 changed it all. The end of February, early March, we were looking to celebrate our first six months of being open. 2020 was supposed to be our sort of year of massive expansion. Everything has had to change because now the, the, main, the main focus for us was public safety, whilst not undermining the care for the pets. Yeah, this, this year it's, it, it has been a struggle because all of the plans that we had in place have kind of, they haven't gone backwards, they've just stalled. Yeah, so at the beginning of the year, there was a lot of positivity for the year 2020. Um, lots of businesses planning to either grow or to scale, depending on really the, 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 the structure of the business and the type of um, product or service that they offer. And I would say that there was a real sense of community spirit in the North East. There still is today. Um, but it was kind of all action score. We, could, we were aware of the early signs of the COVID-19, but I think that there was, a, you know, the, there was kind of a misunderstanding that it might get over to the UK earlier on in the year. I generally thought it would pass. I didn't think it was going to be as big as it was going to be. And then when I got the phone call to say that we were shutting the doors, it was hard. Before we close, um, we, we are actually like family run business. So I don't have like a large pot of money behind to help out. It's pretty much the place looks after itself. It turns itself around. It was already affecting the business for the first, like a couple of weeks prior. would notice the footfall was a lot less. It, you know, there was a lot less customers. Mm -hmm. The week leading up to the, the lockdown announcement, I was actually working here myself. Um, and then when they did announce lockdown, it was sounds awful, but it was kind of a little bit of a relief because I was starting to worry about how if the government didn't say you have to close, then what was going to happen to my business if they just allowed me to continue to be open, but nobody was coming. It was actually a bit of a, of a relief yeah. when, when lockdown was announced. We were, we were really worried. Some, some businesses sort of preempted the lockdown and, mm. and sort of stopped trading. We continued trading as long as we could just for the sake of the staff. It's a really tricky balance because we wanted to stay open to pay people, but then we didn't want to stay open and put people at risk either. So it, yeah. was, it was really, really hard. Day to day, we just didn't know how many customers we were going to have, were any staff going to be off ill, were people in isolation. So when lockdown was announced, it was actually a little bit of a relief because it was like, finally, some really good, strong like instruction from the government as to exactly what we need to do. Um, and, it, and it afforded us a little bit of breathing space just to sort of take a step back and um, sort of reevaluate what we're doing and how we're doing it. On that first day, when they said, you know, we, we are starting this lockdown and businesses will be closing, mm. at no point did we consider that we would be included mm. in a business that would close. Mm. As far as we were concerned, the pets still need treating, they still need healthcare, and all of our staff still need jobs. So that was, that was our, where our priorities lay mm. at that time. When the furlough scheme was announced, um, that was that was a massive relief. If the staff were going to be okay, that's fine. We can work everything else out. Yeah. But at least that was kind of like um, peace of mind in my head that it, it wasn't just my responsibility. It was kind of a weight off. It was, you know what I mean? It was out of my hand, something that I couldn't control. I felt pretty deflated with it, really, really quite sad. It was quite, I don't know, it was quite emotional for me um, because this isn't just a business, it's actually like me, it's become like who I am. Like I love the job, I love everybody and I was really like worried about where it was actually gonna go. Like would, would it still survive? Would it like how, I just don't know. I, I didn't know what was happening really. I just found the whole thing really quite sad, very upsetting. We'd done so well and then we were having to start again and build it back up. It was, it was harder knowing that some of the customers we wouldn't see again. 
after building a relationship and it, it, was, it was a sad time. Uh, it was fraught with worry. The worry and stress of it was like nothing I've experienced before. I had not experienced the stress of knowing that my livelihood depended on what happened tomorrow. And that was very, very stressful. And also trying to work out, I wanted to try and keep the staff feeling secure because they were all worried about their jobs. And quite rightly so, because they didn't know, you know, are we still gonna be here in a month's time? Are we gonna be forced to close? We found that a lot of the, the, the business leaders, they were a little bit, what do I need to do? What do I need to think about? I, I, I'm not really sure because I'm in a bit of shock and disbelief. And is this actually going to affect me? And so what we um, also made people aware of is that because this could be longer term, it's really important that you stay very closely connected with your customers, but also the people in your business. People were not quite sure do they furlough everybody? Who should we furlough? Who should we not furlough? What's fair, not, what's not fair? Um, so there was a lot of decisions to be made. It just became, how do we help our customers who are also adjusting to this massive change to their lifestyle? How do we help just let them know that we're still there for them, really? So we started to operate a takeaway service, which began at the end of that week that lockdown started. We offered um, like a takeaway afternoon tea service for Mother's Day that weekend, just so that people could have a bit of a treat, could have a little bit of normality. Um, and, and that felt really good to have that bit of contact with people. So we started off by doing just a very small amount of takeaway orders, which we, we actually took the orders online. And then Ben and I drove around for three days delivering them all around the city, which was actually great because we got to meet our customers on the doorstep and chat from several meters away, obviously, but like catch up and see how they were doing. And it was a great response from the customers as well. It, was it really, was. It's almost like just giving them like a taste of normality because yeah. I think everybody was just sort of shocked into this lockdown of like, yeah. can't see anybody, can't do anything. Yeah. It's trapped in this house. And then just to be able to deliver a box of cakes, people were just so happy well, and it was, yeah. and they were just so, so great grateful to have this like treat delivered yeah. to them and it's a really nice feeling it felt a bit like santa claus or something like that I yeah. yeah so the deliveries took like three times longer than we thought because we ended up talking to everyone for so long and it was just it was really lovely and then from there actually we extended that to like a click and collect service as well so customers would start to come to the shop once a week and collect orders that they placed if they didn't want them delivered and from there we thought actually we can offer these guys a coffee at the same time and by that point everyone was craving a really good coffee so we started to put the coffee machine on and do those drinks as well we took these baby steps every week really to to slightly increase what we were doing making sure that it was dead safe and that we knew how how we could handle that really and from that it, that turned into the curbside kiosk we call it so just a a screen at the door where our staff can greet our customers all day, every day, and people can rock up and buy whatever they want to take away. But we really got there step by step. It's allowed me to kind of relax, take a step back, look from the outside and get so much done in here that needed to be done. We've been getting all the jobs done that we can't do on a, on a daily basis because we don't shut down, we work seven day weeks. So there is no time to do things that take that little bit longer. We're getting a new kitchen, get new flooring, new toys for the little ones so it's all fresh so it's a new experience for when they do come back so we've pretty much been focused on that that's kept us all busy. It took us I'd say about a week maybe 10 days of trial and error of let's try this let's try this let's try this sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't but we had to feel our way through it but we got there and once we'd got a routine that's when we were able to start you know really really doing a good job because we now do uh, telephone consults as our first line of action. Mm -hmm. We would never have considered that before. Mm -hmm. um, but in times like these, the most important thing is to keep that social distancing between the clients and the staff. And that's been working really well. As we've been able to do a lot of medical management um, remotely. So that's, that sort of opened our eyes a little bit to our capabilities that we have. For all it's been bad, claws and, and missing everybody and not having that group around you and the day-to-day -day routines it has been quite of a blessing for us because there is a lot of things that have just been brushed over and not being able to do to its full potential because 
of us not being able to close long enough. A, a year's worth of muck and grime. <laughs> it's hard, little ones can destroy the place in five minutes, so you can imagine a year's, a year's worth of it. So. It's allowed me to actually reflect on what this what this business actually is like what it actually means to me what it means to everybody else as well like because I took it so personally like because it was mine um now it's lovely for me to see that it actually means the same to a lot of other people as well which means so much to me to, to see that if we saw this coming I tell you what we would definitely be doing what we're doing right now but we would have had more time to plan for it. Like we're, the, the way things are set up now, we're very happy with the, uh, the safety of our staff and the safety of our clients. And it's only now that we've you know, settled into this new routine. I mean, we're not planning on, on changing anything. Even when the lockdown lifts, we'll more than likely stay doing things the way we're doing for at least maybe a month afterwards, just to give that extra buffer. So although we're taking advice from the government, we're gonna err on the safer side of that advice rather than the other side of that blade. And the team have been great. That's been really key actually. Like all of them have been absolute superstars. Just like, it's a really odd time and everything feels different and it's not the job that they used to do really. It's quite different. Um, so we've been really lucky to have just a great team around us who worked super hard to make that work. Yeah, working with like Angelina at um, RTC North, like she's been really helpful with yeah. um, sort of guiding us and, and sort of mentoring us basically as we kind of put together our our recovery plan. I personally felt, you know, quite quite sad, quite sad inside, um, but had to remain really, really optimistic and upbeat to support people because by nature, I want to help people. That's really what my role is about, is helping people. And so for all... I personally had my own concerns and worries, as did every person um, in the world. I felt it was my duty of care to be there and to be the strong sounding board for the business people in the community. It's different for everybody and it's different for every type of business. I think it's, it's going to be a very challenging year, at least to the end of this year, even after things get back to normal. But yeah, I think I think we'll I think we'll be all right. Everyone supporting each other, and I hopefully it'll bring a lot of communities together where it actually, you know, like local shops and things it might actually bring them more business. Obviously, there's been some awful things going on in the world and in this country, and that's really hard to watch and really hard to to see. But I love how we've responded to lockdown. I'm really proud of how we took that like that challenge and didn't rush to do anything out of panic. Um, but equally that we didn't sit around and just kind of wait for the situation to resolve itself. If we'd known about lockdown in advance, I feel like the only difference really would have been we'd have worked that stuff out a little sooner um, and maybe offered more to customers from sooner up, like earlier on. But actually, I, I don't think I would change much about how no. we as a business have responded. I'm really happy with how it's gone and how... Um, how our customers have responded to us as well. It's been the most amazing response. Like we feel so supported by the community and um, that's been awesome. Like it's been a really humbling experience, a real privilege actually. My hopes for the future is that it's gonna be bigger and better than what, what we were, bigger and better than what we were. I think once it all kind of settles down, obviously we'll have a lot of changes that we have to adapt to. Um, but I think you know, once we start to get a little bit of normality back, I can only see positives for Moo Bears. I see us being a thriving business. You know, we'll be as good as what we were, but because of the new equipment that we're putting in, um, new facilities, I think we'll just be a lot better. We can only go from strength to strength, and I'm really looking forward to seeing, seeing how high we can actually go, what we can achieve. Adapting to the change of not being face to face has been one of the biggest challenges I've faced. The key thing for me has been about community. It's appreciating your community and being part of a community and thinking about what you can do to, to give kind of give back to your community. It's really hard for an outdoor person to be to be stuck inside. I've kind of had to push myself out of my comfort zone. So now there is a lot more people who are aware of what I do. There's a lot more people who follow my work, my blogs, my email list and stuff. It never seemed to be enough hours in the day, but then suddenly we had all that time to do to do the things that we wanted to do that we hadn't had time to do before.